Oklahoma is going to Kansas City, but controversy, here it comes. The Sooners snuck by Texas in the BCS standings and into the Big 12 championship game, but was it the right fix in the BCS mess? From the Dodge Sports Desk, I'm Jenny Carlson, and this is OU Football with Jake Trotter. All right, Jake, OU rose up the BCS standings. They get into the Big 12 championship game. Some national pundits say they got it right. Some national pundits say this was uh, the wrong decision. Talk about how all this happened. How did it happen that OU is now playing for the Big 12 championship? Well, here's what I say. I'm glad it's over with, hopefully. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest thing for me. Uh, how it happened was you had three teams that were fairly deserving of going to the Big 12 championship, and especially Texas and Oklahoma, they both had valid arguments, and that's why it was a really tough decision. Uh, the Big 12 also has a unique way of breaking the tiebreaker, going to the BCS. No other uh, division or conference does that. So that added to the controversy. Uh, it worked out for Oklahoma because of the, I think, the two non-conference wins over uh, TCU and Cincinnati, but it was, uh, it was very close. Computers ended up being the, deci the, the deciding factor in all this, right? Not the humans. We thought it was going to be the other way around going into the week. We thought the, the human polls were going to give OU the advantage and that if, if OU could just close the gap in the computers uh, against Texas, that, that they would be okay. turned out that the human polls went toward Texas for whatever reason. I guess they bought hook, line, and sinker, the Texas Brown, Texas Mac Brown uh, political machine. But uh, the computers really rewarded Oklahoma for uh, its body of work, and that included a, a very nice road win against a very good Oklahoma State team. Uh, you saw in the two computer ratings that really factor in home and away, oh, you went from number four and number one in the Wolf and Sagarin ratings, and that really carried the day for the Sooners. We found out yesterday that Bob Stoops had the opportunity to do more politicking, to, to talk to more people through radio, TV, whatever the case was, and that he decided not to. Considering how it broke down and that it ended up being so close with the voters, should he have done more? Was that the right decision that they made? I don't know. I think, I think it almost backfired against them not doing more. Um, and, and I think Bob and, and OU, uh, the OU staff in general, got a little irritated toward the end of the week when Texas really amped it up and didn't cut it out. Background going, uh, going on television during the Bedlam game, the plane flying around really <laughs> irked Bob. So uh, I thought Bob kind of anticipated that Texas may have given up on it a little bit. Instead, it went the other way. Texas really... Uh, uh, accentuated the uh, the campaign, and, and so uh, it became a very close deal. And let's face it, uh, you got to give Texas and the students and, and, and the fans credit because the campaign worked beautifully. Couldn't have worked any better. I couldn't believe how well it worked. So, Barack Obama's calling, saying, yeah, hey, I want oh these my, guys next time. <laughs> they just needed to buy some TV ads, and they would have been in good shape. But, yeah. uh, but really, um, the saving grace for Oklahoma were the computers because they weren't swayed mm -hmm. by any outside factors other than the games on the field. Okay, another hot topic right now, Sam Bradford. Uh, let's talk first of all about his thumb because we find out also yesterday he's got a thumb injury. What's the latest with that? Yeah, he has torn ligaments in his thumb uh, in his non-throwing hand. Uh, he played most of the game against OSU with it. I think he heard it in the third series. So uh, we saw that he can still play with it. Uh, what OU, OU is going to have to do is go to shotgun because uh, when you take a center snap, that ball really pops into the hand and, and you really irritate it. Uh, in that particular position. I've actually had torn ligaments in my thumb, and you can't open your hand. That's the biggest problem is mm -hmm. your hand is kind of like that. It looks like a claw. So, uh, you know, he can kind of get back here and throw it, but as far as taking the snap, I think that's going to cause problems. Now, the difference is I don't know if OSU knew that OU had to go to the shotgun or not, so I don't know if it was a big advantage for Oklahoma State. Missouri's going to be counting on know. OU running out of the shotgun, so we'll see how that plays out. More uh, pointedly to Bradford, uh, the Heisman. Is he the Heisman Trophy winner this year? Uh, he is all, one game away. I, I mean, he can't go out there and have a Jason White 2003 K-State right. game, I think, and hold off McCoy and hold off Tim Tebow. Uh, the contenders are a lot better this year than they were in 2003. I think Larry Fitzgerald finished second, a wide receiver. That shows you how, how soft the field that was this year, but uh, uh, that year. But uh, uh, I think if he plays well, uh, he, he has a, a propensity for not having bad games mm -hmm. uh, this year. So if he just plays well and uh, they win the game, I think he locks it up. Uh, if he struggles, uh, it's going to be interesting. So now the attention turns to the Big 12 championship game. Missouri is going to be the opponent from the Big 12 North. They end the regular season with a loss uh, to Kansas. A pretty great game, but a pretty big shocker that Missouri goes and loses to Kansas. Are they gonna? Are they gonna offer any resistance to Oklahoma? Is, is this a is this a for sure Oklahoma victory? Well, you take away the Kansas loss, and they lost to Oklahoma State, who who was a good team, and they lost to Texas on the road, who was the number three team in the nation. So it's not like they're six and six. I mean, this is a nine and three ball club. It's won a lot of games. Uh, they're very explosive offensively. Here are the problems 
they're banged up. I mean, their big guy, their their best players are banged up. Chase Kaufman, the tight end, is hurt. Uh, Jeremy Macklin has a hip injury. Uh, this is not the kind of game you want to walk, limp into. Um, but it is in Kansas City, and they have the benefit of having played there the week before. And uh, you know, if you're going to beat Oklahoma, you almost have to outscore them. And Missouri obviously is equipped to to score a lot of points. Uh, probably not the best matchup in the world for for uh, Mizzou, but uh, I think they'll have a, a puncher's chance. Oklahoma wins, they go to the national championship game, or do they? Is it that simple? Is is it that cut and dried? Win and, and play for a national championship? I may, re- I may resign if it's if it, <laughs> if it is anything but that. <laughs> we'll make sure we get that in writing. Because I yeah exactly no, it's going to be OU and the winner of Florida Alabama. Uh, I think either one of those teams could win, and it'll be a great national championship. Yeah, well, lots to talk about. Jake will provide in depth coverage as the Sooners look to the Big Twelve title game and beyond. To follow all the news and analysis, stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma.